What's going on, you guys? It's Scott from Fly Rides back again today with another Hardtail EMTB review for you. This is a very special Hardtail EMTB because it is a wave frame. I've got the Bulls Copperhead Evo HD Wave. What an insanely cool bike, you guys. You have got 120 millimeters on the front fork, a hardtail mountain bike, like a real mountain bike, but it's a wave frame, so it's great for shorter riders. It's great for people who have concerns about getting on and off the bike if you're on the trails and you don't want to rack yourself on that top bar. Guess what? The top bar doesn't even exist on this bike. Bulls has also made this bike so that it fits shorter riders. You have a 41 centimeter frame, which should fit riders as short as five foot two, and then a 44 and a 48 centimeter frame on top of that. Plus, it fits riders up to 350 pounds. So it is really a catch-all bike. Like this video and subscribe to this channel so you can see more of our EMTB reviews. But for now, let's break into the review. We'll check out the Bulls Copperhead Evo HD Wave. First things first. You guys know what we're gonna do. Let's talk about specs, baby. Let's talk about specs, baby. Starting things off, you have got the Bosch Generation 4 Performance CX motor, which recently got an update so that it has 85 Newton meters of torque, meaning you have unrivaled climbing capability on this motor. It's the 625 watt hour battery from Bosch as well, which should be good for at least 40 miles out there, even if you are in EMTB mode or higher. Integrated, of course, it is a power tube battery, so integrated into the frame there, which gives it a nice sleek look. And then with that motor, you have got a nice Shimano Dior drivetrain, 38 teeth in the front and up to a 42 tooth cassette in the back. Again, climbing should not be a problem on this bike. Suspension, of course, it is just going to be hardtail, but that is more than most wave frame bikes offer. Most wave frames is gonna be very minimal suspension, but this one has a full-on EMTB Lytro fork offering 120 millimeters of travel and 34 millimeter stanchions. Freaking wow, I mean, that's great. If you have not seen an EMTB like this before, you're not alone. This bike doesn't really exist uh, to my knowledge. There's some bikes that are similar, maybe like the Nevo GX, but even that, you're not getting nearly as much travel and it's not really a mountain biking specific fork. Along with that mountain biking specific fork, you are getting 2.6 inch wide tires, Smart Sam tires. Good starter set for mountain biking, I would say. You might wanna upgrade long-term, but they will get you out on the trails for sure. Sticking with its mountain biking roots, you are also getting Magura MT4 hydraulic disc brakes, a 203 millimeter rotor in the front and a 180 in the back which is a pretty standard mountain biking setup. Any EMTB would not be complete without a dropper seat post, but you still see a lot of hardtail EMTBs without them. Not the Copperhead, you have got a dropper seat post on the back there, and you're also getting Monkey Link accessories. So you can add some lights to it if you would like, um, if you're going to do some night riding, or if you wanna use this thing as kind of a trail commuter, use it on the roads a little bit as well they are offering you the Monkey Link accessories, which have been very popular. So for the price point of $42.99 USD, I think the specs on this are pretty solid. Again, there's not a whole lot of bikes like this, so it's not like you have a lot to compare it to, but $42.99 for a Shimano Dior derailleur, Bosch Performance Generation 4 motor with the 625 watt hour battery is already pretty good. But how did it hold up out on the trails? Well, let's talk about it. So I took the Copperhead out on mostly fire roads. I did a little bit of single track as well, but I do think it is better suited for fire roads, stuff that you would take, again, any other hardtail EMTB on. So it kind of is up to you. If you know you like to use hardtail EMTBs on more aggressive stuff, some people do, you could probably do the same thing as you would on any other hardtail EMTB on the Copperhead. The 120 millimeters of travel was plenty for the type of thing I was doing. Again, fire roads. I was definitely on some pretty rugged stuff. Uh, I never used up all the travel, which was nice. Another thing that's nice about this bike is it does keep you pretty upright. So a lot of people, they wanna be out on the trails, they wanna be mountain biking, but they don't love the aggressive feel of being over the bars. They might wanna just be sitting up, whether it's for back issues or you just like to be able to see things a little bit better. This bike does keep you in that upright position way more easily. 
Nice to have the dropper C post on there as well. You want that if you're going down any sort of decline on a mountain road where it's getting a little treacherous with rocks and loose uh, dirt and stuff like that. So really nice to have the dropper in there. I definitely think long term I would upgrade those Smart Sam tires. I would want something probably a little bit more grippy, especially because you're not getting the grippiness that uh, a rear shock might provide. So long term I would probably swap these out. Maybe even just like a knobby nick to a tire would do from Schwalbe. Nothing like super intense, um, but also if you want to take advantage of the tubeless ready rims, you are going to have to upgrade that tire as well. I thought the Shimano Dior derailleur and the 42 tooth cassette offered plenty of climbing power, especially with that 85 newton meters of torque now coming on the Bosch Generation 4. I didn't need, I feel like I needed 46 or 51 teeth. There was really no reason for it, so I uh, thought the 42 teeth perfectly fine climbing up hills. I would be interested to take this bike on a bikepacking trip. Um, it does look like you could put a rack on it. You do have some uh, bosses in the back there to put a rack on there. I definitely think it's possible. You're, uh, you know, you are going to be on again hardtail stuff, stuff that's appropriate for hardtail. Only you are going to know how aggressive you want to go on a hardtail. Uh, but definitely, it has some bike packing capabilities. I think. There is no question that this is going to be an excellent bike for shorter riders. Um, if you can sacrifice having that, not having the full suspension and go with a hardtail, this is a fantastic option for shorter riders. Um, it doesn't feel like, you know, you're again, you're over those handlebars. You're not having to worry about getting on and off the bike, throwing the bike to the side if you're, if you're falling off or anything. So having that top tube just completely off of the bike is fantastic for shorter riders and I really think they're gonna like that. I did have some questions in terms of before I got on the bike, whether it would be quite as rigid as, uh, as a bike with a top tube, but actually the way Bulls does their welding and uh, the type of aluminum they're using, there isn't a lot of flex, uh, at least as much as I was expecting, which I really liked. Uh, the handling, you feel really rigid, you feel really in control. Um, which is honestly better than I expected. I assume there would be some sort of flex in it, but it really has a nice solid feel underneath it. So overall, a really fantastic bike for the type of riding that I did on it. So if you're doing that type of riding, I would definitely recommend it. Like this video, you guys, and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment below. Let me know if uh, you know of any other bikes like this. I would love to compare them side by side. This wave frame sort of hardtail EMTB style. I hope we see more and more of them because I think it's a really smart move by Bulls to get shorter riders involved, people who might not traditionally be into mountain bikes, uh, into this great sport that we all do. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.